Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode. I am Marshall here at Garage Time TV and we literally, I mean minutes ago, literally finished filling up our cooling system with fresh coolant after our radiator install. We cleaned up those fans and installed those. All new radiator hoses reattached to our heater lines. So what I want to do now is once everything is now connected, we've topped off our cooling system, is I want to get this thing fired up and get that coolant going through there. Um, we might need to dial in the timing a little bit, but I think we're pretty close. Um, at least enough to keep this thing running uh, and idling. We're going to let that circulate through. We're going to let it bleed a little bit. But the main thing I want to start working on is getting that slave cylinder replaced and replacing that rubber line. And I think I have a clutch master cylinder as well. I'll have to look at my box. I think I do. But we'll try and not replace that if we don't have to. But I have a strong suspicion that we're going to need to. So uh, that's going to be fun. But I want to get this cooling system circulated and then uh, replace that so that we can get this thing to move, move under its own power for the first time in, I don't know, a really long time. So let's get started. First things first is we're going to jump inside the cabin here and we're going to turn the key and get this thing fired up. I guess close enough is good enough. Uh, look at that. Oh, oh, it wants to live. Is it perfect? No. Do we need to get a timing light? Yes. Nah, definitely needs work. But it's good enough to let this run, let it get a little warmed up, and then uh, we'll start working on the slave cylinder and the hose, which is cut. Because that's the smart thing to do, is get it all nice and hot, and then stick your arm down there. A few moments later. All right, so this thing has been running for some time, and it still doesn't sound the best, but it's gotten some temperature in it. As you can see right there, about 150 so we're getting warm but the good thing is we are charging the oil pressure is good definitely need gas at least the warning light works and we're sitting at about 1 bazillion rpms according to our bent needle so probably close around 900 a little high so we let this circulate a bit we're gonna kill it <sighs> like that and get some fans going to blow all this out Start working on that to see if we can get it to move. <sighs> All right, so as we start to let this cool down, I did order a clutch master cylinder, and I also, that's this one, but here is our slave cylinder, significantly lighter. We're gonna need to get that one out. We also got a new rubber line, um, super good quality. These I picked up from Vic Auto Sports, so make sure to put a link down in the description where I went and got mine. But we still got the banjo bolt on there, which is good, and I'm sure this comes with a all the stuff we're going to need, except for like the bolts, of course. Oh, all right. So we've got our push rod, our bleeders on there, nice and sealed off of the cap. All right. So what I'm going to be doing, it's going to get tough to get it, you guys down in there, but it sits in there like this. We've got one bolt on the top, one on the bottom. We're gonna need to uh, get that out. So what I would like to do is keep that same rod in there or take it out and try and match it. That way it sits in here the same way. Yes, in here the same way. And then we'll reattach our line um, with our clip. It's gonna be tough to bring you in there. I'll do my best, but uh, let's take this old one out. We'll install the new one. Then we'll crack this bleeder and start putting some fluid in there and hopefully it'll start gravity bleeding uh, and get some of that air out of the system. Looks like a 13. So when we did our engine swap, wow, that is really hot, don't touch that. When we did our engine swap, we had just cut off the old one because we knew we were gonna replace it. And I don't really trust an old 40 year old rubber line when it comes to my clutch. We're gonna take off the top bolt here. And the bottom one down here. All right, 
I should come right out there. Oh yeah, that thing is all beat up. Look at that boot. Good thing we are replacing it. It's definitely seen better days. We're gonna wanna save this banjo bolt off the end. We'll crack that off, looks like a 19. Take that off um, and start putting on our new one. But we're gonna wanna attach our rubber line. This one here, on the back side back here, it's kinda hard to see because this fuel line's in the way, but our clutch metal line is right here. That white line, this. Um, and so we're gonna want to screw this on first and then do our banjo bolt because if we do our banjo bolt full first, we're not gonna be able to twist this. There's a little bracket right here as well. This little L bracket that you can see there, that's part of it. That is gonna hold with a clip, a little C-shaped clip. Uh, it's gonna hold that in place so it won't move on us. But, uh, man, that has definitely seen better days too. Oh. Gross. Yeah, I think we're gonna gonna have to take that out too. Awesome. So we took off the old push rod or where is it? Well, this is half of it. I end up just cutting it off to make my life easy. But we ended up cutting off the old one. The other end looks just like this. And they're the same length when I have, you know, the other half. And we can see where it's gold is where those nuts sat originally. So we matched ours up pretty close. So what we're going to want to do is when we assemble it, it's going to kind of go in this order. We're going to have our nuts first with our kind of D-shaped uh, washer, spacer. Probably spacer is what you call it. And then we've got two washers that have a raised edge to them. I'm gonna go one first. We've got our tension spring, which we have to collapse down. Then our other one, squish that down. And we've got a cotter pin. It's a little. We have a cotter pin, cotter key, split key, I don't know, whatever you call it. That'll fit into that hole at the end and lock it all in place. And then, we will be able to put on our uh, master cylinder, not master cylinder, our slave cylinder, and start bleeding it by attaching that rubber line. And then we can make some minor adjustments here, but I think keeping it to where it was originally is gonna be keeping us pretty close and our pedal pretty happy. So we're gonna feed this through and then put this all on, put the cotter key, put on the new slave cylinder, which is nice and shiny and not all blown out. You know, do this number and then we'll be all set. I'll bleed it and then we'll give it a test. A few moments later. So we've got our new slave cylinder installed down there with our new hose line. The banjo bolt is installed and we cracked that eight millimeter right, right there, that eight millimeter bleeder. So we're gonna come around to the front here to our reservoir, which it's not gonna look good, I can tell you that right now. Yeah, that's not supposed to look like that. But we're just gonna ignore that as we knock over our creeper. And we're just gonna flush it anyway, so we're just gonna let this do its thing. Oh, perfect pour. Now we're gonna let that sit for a second. Put the cap on, because I know I will kick that. Uh-oh, I lost it. Great. So we're gonna let that gravity bleed, come back around. And patiently wait for something to appear there. I don't have the spring attached yet, so if we have to push the clutch to get some movement, that'll probably help us out, but we'll see if stuff starts to come out of there. The next day. Well, it's the next day, and surprise, surprise, no gravity bleed at all. So that means we're gonna be diving under the dash of this X19 to replace the clutch master cylinder and the brake master cylinder because if we're going to have it all down, boy are we going to replace both of them because I don't want to do this again. This is going to be really hard to record, but I'm going to do absolutely everything I can to show you guys what this is going to take. I've got uh, big old long monkey arms and a big old fat head, so these things plus you equals a really hard time. But I will show you the highlights and bring you in on important things, but 
the main goal here is to probably drop the steering column and I'm really we're probably gonna have to drop the pedal box as well to really get that all down and from what I first looked under nut and made there and took a look at these it is really really rusty under there so it's no surprise that it doesn't work but I'm gonna show you that here in a second and uh, like I said it's gonna be tough to show you but I'm gonna do everything I can to show you how this is gonna go and hopefully well um, I did some preventative painting, so I've got those over there in the sun. I just shot them black. Um, I just don't want to get a bunch of surface rust and they look really bad. We're never going to see them. I get it. But just, you know, a thin coat of paint to protect it. And it's out there baking in the sun, so by the time we actually get to it, they'll be nice and dry. So let me show you what these master cylinder and clutch cylinder, uh, clutch master cylinder look like because they are not pretty. But the best part is we filled the lines full of fluid. And now we're about to take off those lines and hopefully not leak fluid absolutely everywhere. So we'll have to get a catch jar for that as well. Let me show you these because they are not pretty. So here we are under the dash. Hopefully this light won't wash you guys out. Here, how's that? So if we come up underneath here, yeah. That uh, whole pedal is quite the surface rust on it so that's probably been leaking for a really really long time and our master cylinder for our brakes there on the right is not looking any better so we're definitely going to replace both of these we have to pull off this plastic cover <clears throat> i think there's four bolts and nut combinations that hold this on we gonna have to drop that maybe maybe not but we'll get down here underneath the pedal assembly there should be like four bolts we've got to unhook our brake line our clutch line here Move these wires. Like I said, it's gonna be really tight for me to get you guys down in here, but there are some bolts and I'll show you the pages in the manual really quick of what we gotta do. That way you guys get an actual official review of what it's supposed to look like and we're just gonna copy that process to bring all this down. So we're here on the bench really quick. This is exactly what we're gonna be doing. It's kind of hard to tell with black and white pictures, but it says to remove all the fluid out, which is probably a good idea. So we're gonna remove all that fluid and it says remove the steering column. So there's probably, there's a, a nut and bolt that hold the steering column on there so we might have to pull the whole thing up and out place a container on the floor to catch the fluid disconnect the brake lines three and seven so the two brake lines um, here and the one here from the blocks two and eight so number eight is on the clutch side number two is here up above on the side where the heater is the uh, center console side is over here and then cap the lines we just want to plug them so they don't keep dripping on us and i think i've got some vacuum caps that should fit that then we're gonna disconnect the clutch line, number one, from the front here, on the top, from the clutch master cylinder, and then cap it. So we're gonna remove the wires from the brake light switch, which is over here, you know, all those wires we just saw, we're gonna remove all those. Remove the two nuts and washers holding the pedal support bracket to the firewall, which looks like it's right above our brake switch, right up here. And then lower it all down. Lower the pedal assembly far enough to allow removal of the hoses and clutch master cylinder number six, which is down here and the hoses two and four, the hose here and here from the brake master cylinder, which is here. They're gonna remove um, the pedal assembly and do it on the bench. It's gonna be a lot easier than trying to do it all upside down. So we're gonna pull it all the way out and reinstall it and put it all back together in this order and then we'll be able to bleed it. And it would be really cool actually if we can try and get this thing to move at least a little bit forward and back under its own power. So this is what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna pull it all out. When I get this pedal assembly out, I'll bring it out on the bench and uh, I'll show you guys. All right, got the steering column out. Gotta be careful because it will slide out. Well, try to slide out at least, and we wanna try and keep it all together. So there were the four bolts that hold it on, two and two, and then just the little screws that hold on the plastic cover. And all these plastic connectors that are on here all actually fit on one way and they're all different. So it's really easy to re-plug them back in and just kind of tuck them back up into the dash. So it's nice to have this out of our way, so we're gonna move on to the next thing. That's the messy part, is starting to disconnect stuff and draining out this old fluid. All right, so we are down here. I wanted to show you that these lines are like the original braided lines, and these kind of FI fuel injected style clamps that are on here are really stripped, and I didn't want to fight those. So we're gonna replace these anyway, so we can actually mar up and damage those fittings as we want 
But if we come over here, hopefully it's not too dark. How about that? Is that better? If we come over here, you can see right up top here, I actually just popped it out. It's just a press fit, uh, little plastic nipple. That's what she said. <laughs> I guess you want to call it. And it sits down in there. And I didn't siphon out anything like the instructions told me because I don't really have anything to suck it out with. So I just put this old uh, Tupperware underneath here. I'm sure glad we did because look at all that crap sitting in there and all that that fell down off our brake pedal. So we're going to let this drip for a while, um, really get it out. We haven't had a chance to get to our back plastic fitting yet, but I think all of it will drain through this. Um, once we get down to really slow trickle, we've got some rags down here to catch some of that, but I want all of that to drain out. The good thing is all of it looks like it's come out of the bad stuff, and we're starting to drain the clear fluid that we put in after the fact. So we're going to let that do its thing. Give it some time here and uh, give our paint some more time to dry on top of our new parts. And then we're going to get this onto the bench and reinstall our new stuff and clean up all that corrosion that's up there because that's pretty bad. And maybe we'll shoot a little bit of you know paint on this too. Try and protect it for another 40 years. So let's just do this thing and see what it looks like when we get it on the bench. One hour later. All right, so here's our pedal assembly. I've just got it clamped lightly on our brake pedal. Um, first thing I wanna do is our clutch uh, master, which is gonna be here on this side, that way you guys can kind of see it. But we've taken that nut off, and so there's this long bolt that goes all the way through it that holds on the brake master and the clutch, but it's one massive bolt. I think it's double, maybe it's not double nutted. I don't think it's double nutted, but there's a nut here <clears throat> that goes all the way through. I'm gonna take that off. And that's going to be a little stuck. So we're going to have to talk to it really nicely. And convince it to come out. Just like... Uh-oh. Never going to see that again. It's probably a spacer that goes between the master and the pedal box. Oh! <sighs> we're going to see it again. I found it. So there's that. That holds, that takes out this distribution block. And this bottom one that we took the nut off also is part of a big bolt that comes out there and the nut is still in the car. So there's these two bolts that go all the way through, one for the top side, one for the bottom side. And we're gonna clean this up to get all this corrosion off there um, and seal that. And then we get the fun job of taking off this bridge. So let me show you here. So those bolts went through here and went all the way through to this little cylinder here and out to the other side. And our other one was at the bottom here, right there. And it came all the way through this. And out through this block here, it all holds it together. So those two bolts have a lot of responsibility. So if we carefully lift up on this, our slave cylinder should come off. Oh, look at that sucker, that's gross. Set that to the side. The rubber boot is just gone forever. <clears throat> that's seen better days. Get rid of that. Now, I'm not gonna make any adjustments on the rod, but I'm definitely gonna lube that up. Um, put some white lithium grease in there. Um, but definitely take a water wheel or a whiz wheel or something and clean off all this stuff and then shoot it black again because that's pretty gross but it should be the same method on this side but since we already have this disconnected it should come with it and just like that all is one piece set that down and that's definitely seen better days too you can see the debris just caked in so definitely to spray this off we'll probably take out well maybe not maybe we'll just tape that up so we don't have to adjust the setting because uh, that's not going to be fun to be down up underneath there, upside down, twisting it and testing it and twisting it. So we're going to clean all this up. We're going to get a wire wheel, brush all this off, get some brake clean to get all this brake fluid off of it, and then uh, shoot it with some fresh paint and lube everything up. That way it moves freely and we don't have to fight it, you know, lubricate all up under here, the springs, make sure everything's nice and good. So we have nice smooth pivot points, pivot points, like that one's, that one's pretty stiff there. So we're going to want to fix that also. So just a lot of cleaning. We're going to clean all the stuff off, lubricate it all, paint it, make it look new. And then we'll uh, slap on our new master cylinder and uh, clutch master cylinder 
and transfer over all these lines. I'll also run the brake clean like through these lines and we take it off to make sure they're full and clear on these distribution blocks. Um, and we'll probably go back into the car on this side, go up through those hoses and just blow a little bit of air like out of a keyboard cleaner duster up through the, the line and make sure that's all clear as well so we don't have any obstructions. So let's get rid of all this rust, clean it up and make it look nice and new again. Many hours later, so it looks like our pedal assembly is dry. It's not tacky anymore. So that means we'll be able to put our master cylinder and our clutch master cylinder on there as well. Looks much better, all painted up. Uh, we just took a water wheel, cleaned it up, um, got all that loose stuff off of it and just shot it with some paint. So it's nice and ready to go. So let's get back to the bench and install this. We also, while this was drying, went and picked up some rubber hose. There it is. <coughs> some rubber hose for our brake and clutch lines from the reservoir to the clutches, uh, the, the cylinders, not the clutches, the cylinders as well, uh, because our old stuff looks like this. And I'm not trusting myself to this. I mean, no. So we're not gonna be using this at all. So we've got nice new rubber line to use it. Now you need to be using line that is brake fluid resistant. Now there is some of that available at Vic Auto's website. Um, I'll make sure to put a link down in the description for that as well. Um, but they, they sell it by the foot. So you're gonna need for the entire car, it's gonna be, I think 14 feet is how much I ordered. And that should do all of it. That should be your clutch line and both brake lines in there as well. So we took those reservoirs off and we blew out a bunch of the debris and you can see some of it that's sitting here on the window but we blew out a bunch of leaves and all that stuff to get that all cleared out, pulled out all the old line. So we're gonna run some new line in there. Um, and we've took our reservoirs off and we took some brake clean and we clean the whole inside of those through the nozzles, through the fittings, um, all around the caps to make sure no more debris gets in the system. So we have fresh fluid going through all of our fresh lines and our fresh masters. So we're gonna have a whole new brake system, at least on the hydraulic side of things. So let's get back to the bench. We'll start working on this and putting it all back in there. And then we'll start cutting the line. So it's one big piece and I don't want to make a wrong cut because that's going to be really bad. Off to the bench we go. So we've got it back up here on the bench. We've got our clutch master cylinder and our brake master cylinder painted. We've got our old one still here on the side. So we're going to want to transfer over all these metal lines onto our new ones, but I'm not going to do that until the new ones are installed uh, because it's gonna be really hard to try and do that without it having a solid base. So we've got our bolts. We're going to, actually we need to get our rubber boots because I don't wanna reuse this old one. We've got a new one in our pack. We'll grab our new boots and then we'll start reassembly. All right, quick change of plans. We're actually gonna take the lines off on the bench vise because we're gonna to have to get these blocks on there to run the bolts through. I totally forgot about that. So we're gonna to have to do these on the bench. And I'm really hoping that these just are nice. Oh and come out, which so far they are. If you don't have a line wrench, where it's got this tight C-bend on it, I highly recommend you get one. They save these fittings, and I'm not very optimistic with how rusty some of these are. But we'll give it a shot here. A little persuasion maybe? That's rounding it off. Awesome. Uh, two to go. One to go, two down, one to go. Come on, come on, come on. It's rounding it off. Come on, the last one, be good to me. It's not being good to me. All right, well, let's get off what we can. Maybe get ourselves some more room to work. But it's all put back together. Uh, what makes this job a lot easier is putting in these fittings first on the master um, and then attaching your blocks. So if you attach your blocks and get them nice and tight, it's gonna be really hard to try and get this centered. So get these because they're very thread specific. You don't want to strip those out. 
So start these first, make sure they're nice and snug, and then move on to your blocks. Don't forget your spacer in between this gold block here. And then our other block goes on the back. Make sure we got our washers on there nice and tight. I left on the plugs when I painted it. So when I attached it, um, I didn't get any paint down in here. You can still see some of the exposed metal around there. And uh, our new fittings are on here for the new hoses. So it all looks way, way better than what we started with. Just a coat of paint goes a long way. So now we're just going to reverse this process and put this all back in there, which is going to be super fun. But we're going to have to attach the back side first to then feed all these rubber lines through the top of the cowl. So on the cowl side, again, I blew all this out. Get some light on here. The reservoirs sit over there. I took them out and they're clean. They're finishing drying there. I just used some brake clean. We're going to run the rubber line just like they did originally here comes through a grommet in the firewall. Well, I guess whatever you want to call a firewall comes out and then down through this oversized grommet here. And that's where your pedals are. So if you're doing this job and your speedometer doesn't work, this is a really good time to do that. And in my case, my speedometer doesn't work because I broke it. Anyway, so we're going to replace that while we're here and feed up a new one through the back. I'm at least going to get this side of it on there. I'm not worried about all the speedometer parts on the bottom and reattaching that and we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I just want to get this fed while we have all of this exposed um, and do it all at once. So let's install the pedals first, have them hung down, and then we'll come back up, feed the rubber line up through to the reservoir, cut it, and then do the next one, feed it up and through, cut it. There's supposed to be three total, one for the clutch and two for the brakes feed those all the way through, reclamp it, and start filling up the system. Oh man, bleeding hydraulic systems is my absolute favorite thing to do. No, not at all actually. All right, so we've got the pedal assembly and all the hydraulic lines reattached. And if anybody tells you this job ain't so bad, they're lying to you, because this was not fun at all to do. So uh, hopefully I never have to do that again. Part of why we replaced those rubber lines is because I don't want to have to bring this all back down all over again uh, to do that. And so one thing that I struggled with was this, the slave main feed line there. It's a 13 millimeter, but it just was not lining up. So I had to take that bolt out, this one that retains it, push it out, drop it down, get it aligned, put it back up and then re-bolt it. But that was like the hardest part of that. But uh, I did feed in a new, Speedo cable, that's what's back here behind this carpet. It's actually behind this Velcro. It goes down to a hole down right underneath the car. There's like a rubber grommet. So I fed in a new one of those while we were up here and had this all out of my way. But we've got everything reattached here. I think the next thing to do is to fill up the fluid reservoirs. We've got our new lines coming down and through here, out around there. Don't mind our cable there. Let's put on our cable. So we've got to fill these up nice and clean uh, here. So I think we're gonna do our slave and master clutch cylinder first, fill this up, crack the bleeder on the slave cylinder and see if we can get some gravity bleed through that. And if that's the case, then we'll move on to the brakes. So that means we're gonna have to lift up the car, break off the wheels and open all the bleeders to see if we can get that to start bleeding through it. So that's gonna be a lot of fun which means that while this is gravity bleeding, I'm gonna pick up all this disaster that we're calling the garage right now, because it's really getting to me and I'm not gonna be able to work like this. So we'll let gravity do its thing and pick up in the meantime. Well, things have escalated quickly, but um, most of it's back together. We've got the pedal assembly reinstalled. We have bled our clutch. Um, so that is all bled and we have good clutch pressure. I'll show you that here in a second. Our brake pressure is not really that good. Um, the driver's side front um, bleeder won't bleed, like it's not getting anything. Um, the back two do okay. Um, the passenger front did okay, but the pedal is just super, super soft. But uh, it has been a long day and Wheels are off, we're up in the air, and we've got quite the mess to match. But what I want to do is get you guys inside the car here real quick, put the steering column loosely back in there. It is our clutch pedal. Oh. 
is good and our brakes are like a wet sponge. It's not very good there. But this means that we have the ability to fire it up and see how good our transmission is. So we'll be able to put it into gear if our clutch is adjusted correctly, which I have a strong suspicion that it is. But we'll put it into gear and see if we can get these start spinning and see what we can get. I really think it'll be just fine, but we gotta get it going first. So let's hop in here, let's set you guys up. We'll fire it up and see if we can start going through some gears. All right, so it's been a few days since we fired this thing up, so we're gonna fire it up. Hopefully it'll, it's probably not gonna sound the best. We still haven't like tuned it or anything like that, but uh, we're gonna hopefully get this thing fired up. Hopefully it won't sound like death, but uh, enough to get through some gears. So we're gonna be watching our back wheel. Now I'm anticipating some uh, noise considering our rotors look like they were thrown at the bottom of the ocean and then re-picked up and put on this car. So we're probably gonna be hearing the, the rotors scraping on brake pads. It's not gonna sound very good, but these are just, for now, we're gonna be doing big brake improvements. Um, you guys are gonna to wanna to subscribe to make sure you are staying tuned up and up to date with that. We have a big brake kit coming and lots of good improvements coming to this car once we improve it's on the road and make it more road worthy. So make sure to subscribe for that. Make sure you hit the little bell and all that good stuff. So, let's fire it up. Let's see if we can get through it. We're gonna start in first gear, and if that works, we'll go to second. If that works, we'll go to third, fourth, and so on and so forth, and see if we can get uh, reverse as well. Uh, reverse is like a weak gear in this, so we wanna definitely be careful um, when we go into reverse. Hopefully we won't tear it up, but here we go. This is going to be the end of the episode. We've made some big headway on this project in just a month that we've really had it. A month and a week, I think, five weeks, that we've had this thing. We've had a locked up engine in it. We swapped that out, got a good one in it. Now that it's good and runs, we now have a clutch. Uh, brakes are still in the works, but we got a new brake master cylinder in there. The pedal assembly is all taken care of. It's all treated. We've got all new rubber lines from our reservoirs. We've got um, all sorts of cleaned up stuff. Uh, just really, really coming together, and it's gonna be a super fun car to drive. It's so good knowing that we've got all the gears. You know, cycling through all those gears, showing them uh, running there, it's just, it's gonna be good. And I'm really excited, and we've got new wheels uh, and tires we're gonna throw on this thing. We've also got that brake kit, um, and we do need to take it around the block. And so I think that's gonna be on next episode, is we're going to, uh, at least at the minimum, take it for a spin. We may not have the wheels and tires quite yet um, on there, but, I definitely want to go around the block, um, but we'll we'll go for a drive and we'll definitely do a brake upgrade. We're gonna be putting the Vic Auto Big Brake uh, Prima Brake Kit 
on this. It's at least the front uh, brakes are an upgrade. We definitely need new rotors in the back because those are pretty awful. Um, but I'm really, really pleased with this. It's, it's come a long way and we are doing so good on this thing and I just cannot wait to get this on the road and drive it for the very first time. And I'm sure you guys are right there with me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribing really, really helps the channel, so please make sure you do that. Hit that little notification bell so you always know when new content comes out for you, uh, for you guys, and get a little notification. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see you.